Uh, so now it's our uh, pleasure to uh, welcome uh, Jose Manuel Garcia Aznar, uh, also known as uh, Manu, which is shorter. And uh, so Manu is full professor at the uh, University of, uh, of Saragossa. He's principal uh, investigator of uh, multiscale uh, mechanics and uh, biology uh, group at the Institute for Research in uh, Engineering of, of Aragon. And um, so his talk uh, will be on, uh, will be on, on, on cell mechanics and, and cell modeling, so for migrations and, and other problems so related to uh, cell deformations and related to, uh, to uh, the, his ERC grant uh, in silico uh, cell. So once everything will be ready, so we'll have the pleasure to listen and, and watch to this great story. So I don't know I don't sorry I don't know why but it it doesn't work so I have passed my presentation to other computer so I'm sorry because there are some animations that didn't work but most of them are, are working I hope No es que estás poniendo todo en mayúsculas, yo creo. No, sí, sí, eso sí. Es. Sí, Puntero. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to, to present my my work that I entitled Individual 3D Cell Migration from Computational Modeling to uh, Experimental Validation. So I, I would like to remark the what is very important is cell migration for many processes, many biological processes like tissue regeneration, morphogenesis, and cancer invasion. So it's very relevant to try to model how cells are moving. And for understanding this, it's very important to understand the mm, multi-scale phenomena that our organism is, how our organism is organized. And in, in the case of the cell, it's very relevant to focus in the interaction what happened between the cell with the extracellular matrix and what happened with it, the cell with its own components. So we are going to focus mainly in these three scales. And from the beginning, we, we have developed many different kind of, of numerical models to simulate cell migration, combining different approaches, like at tissue level using classical mechanics, reaction diffusion analysis with finite element analysis, Later, we try to go down into the scale, simulating individual cells using different kind of approach, like box cell, immersed finite element analysis. But in addition, we try to understand what happened inside the cell, simulating the, the cytoskeleton. But first of all, we need at least a little bit to know how do cells normally move. So the migration cycle is divided normally in these three processes. First is polarization. Normally the cell are going to receive signals and depending on these signals, the cell is going to polarize. After that, normally cells create 
protrusions in the front part of the cell and later there is adhesion formation here, new due adhesion, and in this part the adhesion starts to be weaker. And after that, this process, normally what happens is the cell is growing in the front part and in the back part or the rear part, normally contraction appears. So when contraction appears, the cell is moving. Yes, sorry. This is sorry because this is the first simulation that. Oh, okay, much better. Yes, <laughs> this is the first simulation that it it doesn't work. Sorry, but normally we can see that this phenomenon is quite good in two dimension. But in three dimension, that we are going to see more simulation, more real uh, experiments. We are going to see that this phenomenon is doesn't occur exactly like is described in 2D. In 3D, the phenomenon is, is, is completely different. So, to advance, I have to... Lower. Ah, lower, OK. OK. <laughs> you don't know? Ah, OK. So normally there are different kind of stimuli that, that are regulating cell migration. We have chemical cues or mechanics like stiffness or electric field or some kind of signal that is binded to the matrix. Yes. So our first idea was to try to simulate cell, cell migration using classical uh, continuing approach where we simulate the extracellular matrix taking into account different kind of laws and incorporating the conservation equations and later we try to incorporate in our model soluble factors, growth factors that are moving that is regulating chemical signal, signaling and later we incorporate cells but cells can exert forces, are elements that are passive, but at the same time are active elements. So to take into account this phenomenon, we consider cells, and cells can exert forces on the matrix. And these forces, we simulate as a first simple approach, the cell like a set of springs, and later a system that is the contractile system that is very similar, like it's following a classical heel law that is normally used in our muscles. So in this way we incorporate the forces due to the cell and we are able to simulate, uh, okay we incorporate this like the incorporating also possibility of migration, proliferation of cells, differentiation and we are able to simulate, we incorporate the different factor, oxygen, growth factor, angiogenesis and fibroblast in classical reaction diffusion. Oh, sorry. The question, and after that, we can see here, for example, the phenomena of how one wound is healed due to this phenomenon. So in this case, it's, it's a, heal, a wound that is not very big, and so the, the cells uh, can repair the heel without problem because normally uh, we can solve. We, we have analyzed different conditions like when the wound is larger and we have used stitches, this kind of things. But here my main intention is you can see here how the cells are moving in a classical continuing approach. So our idea is to try to understand how one cell is moving. For that we started to work with other groups that do experiments in microfluidics. We started to collaborate with a group in MIT with Professor Roger Kamm that developed this kind of chips. And in this kind of chips, we have here a gel that tried to replicate, to simulate our tissues. And later here, we simulate one cell by a very simple approach, only like a set, a set of box cells 
and we solved the problem in a very easy way. So we applied a gradient and we also applied a chemical gradient and we can simulate, for example, how the fluid flow changes around the, the geometry. But our cell is going to, okay, this is a validation in collaboration with this, this group. And later what we did, this very simple model where we have the cell is a set of voxels. We have the nucleus of the cell. And later we are going adding elements in function of the uh, mechanical or chemical stimulus that the cell is receiving. In this way, uh, th this model is purely phenomenological. So in this way, we have, for example, a section of the cell. We have the boundary. And we def decide if we add if the cell is going to grow or not, depending on the mechanical stimulus. For example, if we have uh, this part of the cell, that this is the part where we have the maximum stresses. So there are different possibilities, for example, for this boss cell. And given that this boss cell is closer to the stress, to the maximum direction of stress, this boss cell has more probability to appear. The model is a simple idea, and with this, idea, we, of course, we couple a chemistry, a flow condition, and mechanical condition, and we establish the probability, and we add elements and remove elements. I'm sorry because these two simulations didn't work, sorry, but the next one is working. And for example, here we can see how one cell is moving inside one scaffold, changing different kind of stimuli we are able to regulate how the cell is moving. And it's, it's a pity that I, can, I couldn't show you the previous presentation because the model uh, replicates, reproduces very well the kind of moment that the cell is presenting. But this model is very simple. And it's not able to reproduce correctly the shape of the cell. So in this class, we have problems when, for example, we have a fluid flow that can move the cell. For example, there is a recent paper where there are experiments to measure the properties of the cell and where under a fluid flow, the cells are forced to pass through this channel. And this, you can see how the cells are deformed. We try to simulate this phenomenon, but it's not possible to reproduce accurately the geometry of the cell with the previous model. So for that, we define a new approach. So we need to improve the representation of the shape of the cell. And later, we need a good fluid cell interaction. For that, we define an immersed finite element approach in which we are going to couple both phenomena. So in, on the one hand, we have the solid equations that we solve. Later, we have the fluid equations. And in the interface, we a couple the velocity and also the normal stresses. And with this model, we solve this in a coupling formulation. Later we use how we do this. We have a fixed mass mesh for the fluid, and later we have a mobile mesh that is regulating the movement of the cell. So with this, we use a level set function to define the geometry, but we have here we have everything is fluid, here everything is solid, and these intermediate elements, we have an interface where we distinguish between solid and fluid. So what we are doing is we insert, immerse the geometry, we solve fluid solid equation, obtain the displacement, update the mesh, and later we update the nodal variable. So for that, we need to map back to the lace configuration to update uh, other variables like stress. So in this way, we started to simulate, for example, how under a fluid flow condition, how the cell is going to deform when it's going to move inside the channel. And you can see that the prediction of the, of the shape of the cell is quite similar, quite similar how the uh, experiments are determined. But it's, it's really a qualitative validation. It's not really a quantitative validation. <coughs> but our idea is these cells, OK, we later did a 
okay, a variability and analysis of different parameters, sensitivity analysis. Later, one of our main questions is, but these cells has, have nucleus, so it's interesting to try to model a cell with a nucleus. So you can see here that we have a nucleus, we consider the nucleus is a solid, later we have a fluid here and another fluid here, so the, in this case we have two interfaces. And we can see how the fluid is going to deform the cell. And in this case, we are able to simulate not only the, the, the stress of the cell, but also the shape of the cell, but also the stresses and the strains on the cell. So with this model, we are able to predict better the, the, the shape of the cell. But our interest is also to try to understand what happened in the subcellular level, what happened inside the cell. So for that, we found a very simple and interesting experiment. Uh, this experiment, uh, a cell was set between two plates. The up plate is flexible. However, the low plate is very stiff. When you put the cell inside, you can observe that if this uh, stiffness is very low, the cell exerts a lower fo force. However, if we increase the stiffness of the, of, the, of the plate, the force that the cell <coughs> is doing is much higher. So, there are many uh, researchers that consider that this is the system that the mechanism system that normally cell uses to uh, sense the stiffness of the medium of the surrounding tissue. Normally the cells contract. The problem is, you can see here, that initially you can observe that if you increase the, the, the stiffness, more or less the force that the cell is doing is linear. However, there is one moment that if the stiffness is higher of this value, the force is saturated. It is, it is for a stiffness, the cell is not able to sense the stiffness because the maximum force that the cell is able to do is achieved. So the cell is not able to do more force. It's like ours. If we try to, for example, bend a bar of steel, depending on our, our muscles, we are going to be, but there is a value of the stiffness that we are not able to. So it's very interesting this result because we can observe that, for example, when, we, when a tumor exists, the tumor tissue normally presents this kind of stiffness properties. So the cell, one of the problems is the cell are, are not able to send the mechanical stiffness because for them it's hard tissue. So the sensi sensi sensitivity of the cell is in this region. Why it is happening? We try to understand what are the mechanisms that regulate this saturation. For that, we try to simulate the full cytoskeleton using a particle-based approach, where if we see here, we are going to simulate the actin filament and later the uh, cross-linker of this filament and in red the myosin motors. So, in this way, we use a Brownian dynamics particle-based approach and later an actin a network that is cross-linked, and with this we simulate a piece of, of the cytoskeleton of the cell. Later, the, using the Langevin equation and defining extension, bending potentials and repulsion potential between these particles, and also we consider the possibility of unbinding between the different cross-linker, and we assume at this low for the working of the filament, the filament, the motor, sorry, the myosin motors are going to walk along this actin filament following this low, and normally they tend to move toward the barf ends. And with this uh, model, we put all together and we try to understand which is the emergent behavior when we change the properties of the surrounding medium.
So we change the elasticity of the surrounding medium. And we can see here that we simulate this, and we can see how when the stiffness is very low, we obtain a big contraction. However, when the, the, the stiffness is higher, the cells, the myosin molecular try to move, but they are not able to deform the external geometry. So, we observe here that also the topology, the geometry of the, the connectivity, the morphology of the network is different. Here is more like connected. However, here we have holes in the mesh. But what is more interesting is we are able to predict the saturation phenomena. So when we increase the, the, the stiffness, we increase the forces that the cell are able to do. But when the stiff is very high, we can see here how the force of the curve is always here. So this model is able to qualitatively to predict how the contraction is regulated by this uh, myosin actin system. So the problem is when we finish this part is we consider that we have models that work quite well, but they don't, uh, we don't know if they are good predictions or not. So we try to determine, to develop more quantitative analysis in order to compare with real data. So in this sense, our group that was, was mainly uh, numerical started to create experiments in, in our lab. So the idea is we are going to try to understand how the extracellular matrix properties regulate the migration of fibroblasts in 3D. So for that, we compare two different kinds of materials, collagen, that is normal tissue that we have in healthy tissues, and fibrin tissues, that is a tissue that normally occurs when we have a wound. And we incorporate different chemical factors to understand how these chemical factors regulate the behavior of the cells. So it is our strategy that we try to do is first of all, we characterize the hydrogel to fit the experiments and also the numerical model. And we try to develop our experiments where we measure what we need to create our models. And later with these models, in fact, now we have first results. We are trying to improve our experiments and to establish this loop in which we hope to advance quicker than when we use results from other groups or even from the literature. So I'm going to show here some preliminary results. So what we have observed normally is uh, in this paper, there is an interesting review of how cells behave in 3D. So our experience with the previous simulations in the that we develop with the simulation with experiments of microfluidics in cancer cells, these cancer cells were epithelial. And these epithelial cells normally move using an amoeboid system. That is completely different to what we observe, like we are going to show now, in the case of the fibroblast. Healthy fibroblast or mesenchymal cells normally migrate in a different way above all in 3D. Really is a competition between protrusion that the cells are creating, and there is a competition between this that in between this protrusion, it depends on how is the geometry and the mechanical properties of the surrounding media. So our first knowledge was completely different, and all the work that we have developed, it wasn't valid for simulation fibroblasts in 3D. So it's, we found this paper, and it corroborates with the, the experiment that we, we measure. So the first idea was, OK, we are going to characterize the gels to understand the differences, the geometry. And we can see that the collagen is this one, the fibrin is this one, and the geometry is not exactly the same. 
So you observe the collagen is mainly a, is a fibrous tissue, but it's mainly the fibers are bent. However, the fibrin is more straight, straight. And we can see here the detail of how is the, the fiber. So the pore side is bigger, is higher in collagen in comparison with, with fibrin. The fibers have present a similar radius. And it's more bundled in the case of collagen than in fibrin. In addition, we measure the permeability where we find uh, also differences in the permeability, how the fluid is moving inside. We observe that in collagen is more permeable than fibrin. And of course, we quantify rheological properties, G prime in collagen and fibrin. And we observe that both of them have a nonlinear behavior in function of one level of strain that is your serve is, is lower in the case of fibrin and uh, the properties are much higher in the case of uh, fibrin in comparison with collagen. So we have to keep in mind this and we are going to observe a very, dif a very different behavior in the cell during migration due to this reason. So the first idea is we are going to put the cells in our microfluidic chambers, but the problem is we are going to put a chemical attractor to, uh, in some way, regulate that the cell move in one specific direction. But what we observe that we need to understand how the chemical gradient is formed inside the, uh, the material, because we didn't know how the diffusion is produced. So this is the kind of chip that we use that is described in this paper. And normally we have one central channel where we have the gel is here. And here we have the cells. And normally we, are, we add a growth factor. In this case, it's the platelet derived growth factor. That is the growth factor that occurs normally when we had wounds. And when we include this factor, what's happening? This factor is moving at, through the gel, creating a gradient. And normally what we observe is there is a part of this factor that is degraded. So in contact with oxygen is degraded. We have to quantify this. That is not easy. Later is diffusion. But there is, this diffusion is indicated in gray color. And later you see that there is yellow uh, part of the factor because it's bound to the matrix. So it's very difficult to validate uh, this and to understand how the gradient is formed and which is the time to achieve a stable uh, gradient. Our, our idea was to use a, a simple computational simulation, but we need to validate. So to validate, we use ELISA. ELISA is an experiment that we are able to, to evaluate, which is the concentration of the factor here at the beginning, okay, and here, and after a number of hours, we obtain the, a sample from here, and we know the concentration of the factor in each time, in each period of time. So with this idea, we establish a classical reaction diffusion equation where we have the coefficient diffusion follow this, uh, this equation, that's the, the typical Einstein, it's down like uh, Einstein equation, where we have several parameters. This is the radius of the molecular, the molecule. This is the, the radius of the, of the fiber, of the matrix, and this is the matrix void radius. And incorporated this, we are able to estimate the diffusion coefficient and later, we assume that the degradation is linear with the concentration of the factor, and the binding, we assume that is linear with the factor. Very simple approach, and in this way, we evaluate, and we can see here, this is the result after uh, 24 hours, and we can see here, this is the initial conditions in the addition channel, that is the green one, and after uh, 
24 hours. This is in collagen, this is in fibrin. We can observe here, this is the, the, in the opposite channel, how is what happened after 24 hours. We see that this is the experiment and this is the numerical uh, prediction. And we can see that the model is able to predict quite well how is the distribution of the, of the, of the factor. So after that, this is the chemical factor that we have after 24 hours in the collagen and in the fibrin. So in collagen, we have diffusion and binding. However, in fibrin, we have mainly diffusion. One that we now did, we evaluate how the cells are moving in 3D. And we analyze the first things is how is the vinculin, the actin distributed in the cell. So we can observe that in both cases, we have branches, protrusions. So the cell, as you see, for example, with the first simulation that I showed you the real cells in which are more uh, amoeboid. But here you can see that we have a lot of branches. And there are small differences in, in, the, in, the, in the shape. And we analyze the following case. This control, so no factor. This is the first case. We have cells inside. Later, we incorporate the platelet derived factor. That is the factor that normally regulates the, the, the healing of, of wounds. And later, we incorporate Blevistatin. Blevistatin is a drug that uh, removes the action or partially removes the action of myosin. So myosin, if you remember, is the system that the cell used to contract. So what happened is we remove contraction. So we analyze these six cases. And here we can observe first results. I'm going to remark simulation should work. Oh, no. Sorry, it doesn't work. OK. We are going to observe this one that is the other is the global behavior, um, but here we are going to see the local behavior that is, is very similar. If we observe in the case of, of control, we observe that normally the cell launches branches and later is moving in collagen. However, in fibrin, the cells are launching, uh, creating branches, protrusion. However, the cell is not moving. Because we, we consider what's happening is the matrix is so stiff and the pores are smaller that the cells are not able to move. If we incorporate the chemical factor, the movement in comparison with control in collagen is incredible. I'm sorry, but you, we cannot see in the other uh, simulation. But here, even, you can see that the cells are moving much quicker than here. In the other simulation, in the other animation, it's very clear. The advance is tremendously higher when we have the factor. So it's clear that the factor is regulating the movement toward the place, toward the site of the wound, for example. But what happened with the matrix? If we observe here, the fibrolast is not able to move. The, pr the protrusions are lo longer than in this case. However, the cell is confined, is not able to progress. So it's clearly that even although the conditions of the, of the growth factor, the signaling is working, the condition of, of course is clearly limit, limiting, regulating the movement of the cell. But what happened with we incorporate blevistatin? When we incorporate blevistatin, the branches is, are even longer. The movement is more or less achieved, we can observe. But normally, if you observe here or here, normally the cells create branches and normally retract branches. However, when we have levistatin, this phenomenon is, is occurs less. 
So later, the most important is not only to observe this, it's to quantify this. So when we incorporate PDGA, production and motility is increasing, and blevistatin, uh, the productions are growing. So we observe here, this is the result, when we incorporate uh, growth factor, and we can observe differences in between the zone. The zone one is the one that is close to the growth factor. The zone three is the one that is uh, farther from the growth factor. So the measurements of zone three are very similar to what happened in control experiments. However, in zone one, you can see here, this is the red trajectories, the speed is much higher. Here, we can see a comparison of control, PDGF, a PDGF plus levistatin, and we can see here that, and this is collagen, and this is fibrin, and here we can clearly observe the difference. In, with PDGF, the speed is much higher in comparison with control, and much higher in comparison with fibrin. And also, it's very much higher than we, we compare with levistatin. Okay, this is later, we have more data that I going to advance, but it's a comparison of all the phenomena more uh, quantitative, so we have a clear study of, of this phenomenon. So, the next step, after we develop this result, this experimental result, we create a numerical approach, a discrete approach that where our first, it's a very simple model, our first idea is for us a cell is a nucleus and later we have a number of protrusions that define the phenomena or try to describe the geometry of the cell. And we are going to incorporate three main mechanisms. We assume that chemical factor is regulating chemosensing, so we are going to try to simulate how the cell are uh, sensing chemical factor. Later we have protrusion dynamics, how the cell create protrusions, retract protrusions, and later how the extracellular matrix that gives properties constrains this protrusion. So, the cells are embedded in a extracellular <laughs> matrix and we are going to simulate how is the intracellular signaling. For that, we are going to use a reaction equation. And initially, we assume that the membrane receptors, the cell membrane have receptor, and all of them are distributed homogeneously over the cell surface. Of course, if the cell, for example, is, we have a this chemical gradient, if the cell is here, in this point, we are going to have more chemical stimulus than in the rear part. So we hear here the distribution in one map of the factor distribution over the cell. And in this cell, we use this kind of model. So we have a factor here. So we simulate the factor. We incorporate that this factor can binding to a receptor. And inside the cell, we have what is called PI3K, that is a chemical factor. When this factor is bound to the receptor, activate this factor, and when this factor is activated, the protrusion start to grow. So, for that, this is a stochastic phenomenon that is the most, uh, the part that requires a most uh, highest computational cost. And we have, we use a Poisson, Poisson's distribution, reaction dynamics are stochastic, and later we have a time resolution using the Gillespie's algorithm that is quite usual in chemical reactions. And later, so we use these this, uh, equations, and this equation is activated in each point we discretize the cell surface and each point of the cell surface. 
stochastic view. And for that, we use uh, techniques in the space, multivariate non-homogeneous Poisson distribution uh, published by Satman. So with this idea, we, in the place where are normally the peaks of PI3K is where the, loca is the location of the protrusion is going to appear. And the size, the size of the protrusion, the protrusion is going to grow depending on the stiffness of the matrix. And also it's going to retract. And it's going to create these dynamics. And in function of this dynamic, the cell is moving. So for that, we assume that uh, an analogy with a uh, surrounding matrix, and we use the SLB theory. So when the protrusion is uh, uh, growing, you can see here that forces are going to appear there, regulating and constraining the growth of the protrusion. So for that, we use the SLB theory where the strain is regulated by the value of the PI3K. So later we have the forces that each uh, protrusion is reacting, and we assume that here in the nucleus we have the reaction, and in function of these forces, the cell is going to lead the uh, speed of the cell, of the cell nucleus, depending on the forces that all the protrusions are doing. So here, oh, sorry. Today I'm going to buy a ticket for lottery because it's so bad luck. <laughs> okay. So we can see here how we are able to simulate the migration of the cell in 3D, so it, these are preliminary results, and uh, we are working to improve the model, but the model you see is very simple, it's not very complex. The most difficult is the chemical reactions that define how the intracellular signally regulate the growth and the growing, uh, the currents and the growing of the, of the, of the protrusions. But we have started to quantify uh, and to, to compare our measurements with our simulation. So it's clear with the model we can obtain many results and we can observe, for example, how is the oh sorry, how is the influence, how is the influence of different chemical factors depending on the where the cell is, we obtain the different speed in collagen and in fibrin. If we compare with the, with the experimental result, we can observe that in vitro, we have, in average, our results are quite good. If we compare the size of the, of the protrusion of the philopodium, okay, the prediction is not so good, and we are, in fact, working to try to improve this part. But more or less, the definition of the movement is, is, is more or less good. But the, where we are having problems is in the variability. The problem is our model is stochastic, so our numerical results uh, present a variability. In fact, if we see here, this is the, uh, a box plot where we show the median of our simulation, and our, you see that our chemical model incorporates the variability of the, of the numerical results. 
But the problem is, if we see here in the gray area, we are going to show the variability of the experiment. So we can observe that the variability of the experiment is much higher than the variability that we have incorporated, incorporated in our model. In our opinion, it is happening because we have incorporated the uh, probability of the stochasticity in the chemical reaction, but not in the matrix. We have assumed that the matrix, we have quantified the properties, but the matrix, we have assumed that is homogeneous, but it is not true. Is it, it heterogeneous? As we show the fibrous mesh, okay, we can observe that it's clearly heterogeneous. So we need to incorporate this to obtain at least this variability, because if not, we are not able to. Later, the other problem that we have is to quantify measurements in vitro is not easy, above all in, in fibrin, because the measurement is very, very small. In 3D, when you do experiments in 2D, the cells move very easily and the speed are quite higher. However, in 3D, the movement of cells is very slow. It's very slow. And in fibrin, it's even much, much more slow, much slower. So our challenge now is to try to predict also not only the average value, but also the variability of these results. So I would like to finish with some general conclusions. So I have tried to, to show some numerical examples that we have used to, to investigate uh, how different mechanisms can regulate migration. And in our opinion, numerical simulation is very good tool, but the problem is we require validation because without validation the impact is, is not enough. So we require validation and for validation we need to combine, combine technologies. We need to combine experiments in vitro or in vivo, but we need to incorporate image processing techniques to quantify, to measure data. And later with this information we can validate and test our model. It is fundamental. Normally, mechanobiology is relevant, but also mechanochemobiology. We have to investigate more how is this relationship between mechanical and chemical factor. I think it's, it's very important. And also, although is computational uh, analysis is very interesting, and we have observed in the previous presentation that we can develop a lot of uh, realistic simulation in my opinion, still, the numerical tools are not sufficiently uh, powered. I think we need to develop novel numerical strategies that allow to link scales and reduce the computational cost. I think it's, 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 it's fundamental. So uh, this work has been achieved thanks to, to the institutions that give money for, for, for doing research. And also uh, people, these results are mainly in the PhD work of two persons, Oyana and Federico, and also the collaboration with other, other groups in Spain and around Europe and USA. And thank you very much and sorry very much for, for all the problems that I have. Manu, thank you, thank you very much uh, for this wonderful overview of your of your work. Any question? Yes, Mariano. It's a wonderful presentation. I have a, a question on the <coughs> the the matrix yes. is continuum mechanics, right? Yes. And what which is the coupling between is the force? So we, how we, do use, we, we didn't we didn't solve mechanics. We use an analytical solution that the SLB solution. So we consider that a protrusion is like an inclusion in one matrix, and we use this theory. Okay. So this is a simplification that we have made, but it's, it's clearly non-realistic. So, so it, could so be done in, it could be done in this way. Let's say yes, yes. you can solve 
yeah. uh, mechanics in yeah. the uh, mechanical simulation in the matrix and then couple with yeah in fact now we are working on that the first step is we are coupling with finite element that mm. is easy but the problem is we we have a model that simulate the mechanical behavior of the gel is it is it not a problem but we need to incorporate a discrete model that simulate the fiber and incorporate the stochasticity of the geometry of the of the matrix and this is our next step maybe partially related to that also is um, because in principle even in your microfluids although it's relatively simple you still have like I mean maybe the not perfect uh, geometry you have the oxygen you have the nutrition's going there and things like that don't you think that a, a possibility would be like do a little bit like Mariano said, like a full multi-physics system and then try to solve it on a supercomputer? Or do you say like, no, it's maybe a better approach like you do, is like make all the, or, or kind of simplify all the different steps and then solve them separately and then try to integrate the information rather than do a whole kind of simulation of everything? I don't know what your idea is about Yes, this. M m our idea is normally, uh, mm, physiological matrix have um, a high variability in properties. Even these collagen gels, hydrogel gels, depending only on the temperature, on the day, on how you take the piece of collagen that is, the, you obtain a different result. So our next idea is to work with matrices that perhaps although they are less uh, physiological, we can control things. We can control things like properties and we obtain a repetition of the properties of the matrix. So the, the next step is, okay, we are going to lose, to lose in some way physiological properties of the matrix, but we are going to incorporate matrices in which we are able to control the size of the porosity of the pore. We are going to be able to control the degradation of the, of the cell because here the cells are able to degradate. So we are going to incorporate matrix where the cells are not able to degrade. And we hope in this case to reduce the variability. So the problem is, even in this case, that is a uh, in vitro experiment, that is, okay, there is a high control of many things, even in this case we have a high variability. So uh, we are going to try to advance in this direction to reduce this variability. Uh, in this moment, we, we find new solution. Perhaps the solution could be uh, to incorporate a model with, we incorporate the geometry, but in any case it's, it's going to be difficult to, to characterize exactly the matrix. But in any case, I think we, we need to reduce the variability in order to improve our model and to improve our knowledge of the process. Any more, any more questions? Yes. Uh, thanks. Uh, I think Charles will take it. No, no. <laughs> Please use the microphone. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I have a, a question on uh, if I wanted to understand better your model, this model of random protrusion. Yeah. Can are you uh, are you not considering uh, explicitly polarization? You want to include it after, or is not important no, 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 no. for this? Or it can polarize like as an emergent behavior? Or no, no. The, okay, in our opinion, there is no polarization in this kind of movement. We didn't, we didn't observe polarization. If you see the first picture when yeah. of the, there is no polarization. So, so, so you, you plan the model because of this fibroblast uh, migration and there is no polarization. No polarization. Because see, at the beginning of your talk, you addressed the yeah, polarization yeah, 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 problem. So I was wondering if you are planning to. No, because initially, okay, uh, when you check, when I started to work, how the cells move, the first idea is this scheme that I saw, polarization, and protrusion and contraction. And when I started to study 3D, it, it never happened. And it, this phenomenon of polarization normally occurs in ameboid migration, even in 3D. In this case, yes, you have uh, polarization. But when you have mesenchymal migration, that is the migration that is mainly regulated by protrusion, uh, and in this review, other review paper that is later, you never, uh, they, okay, they mentioned that they never found uh, polarization. It's a phenomenon of competition between protrusion. So you don't need it, basically? You don't need it, yeah. Okay. And, and another question. In your, like, uh, 
gradient yeah. uh, validation. I couldn't understand. So you said in the case of collagen, you have a nonlinear gradient basically because of binding, right? Yeah. And the fibrin, you have a linear gradient. No, 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 it's not linear, but in this case, the nonlinear is more due to the. Okay, both uh, cases, we have degradation. The degradation is similar in both uh, because it's not depending on, on this. So we assume the same degradation for, for both systems. And the degradation gives you a, a little bit nonlinear, but it's more nonlinear in the case of collagen, yes. But, but then you compare the, the, the one concentration and the other. Yeah. Uh, you don't have a way to validate, actually, to visually see in the experiment if it's uh, the nonlinearity. Yes, we, we have we have can done you it. validate that? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very important to do it. In fact, we did it with Destran. Yeah. yeah okay. With also. Destran, we obtained this nonlinear behavior. Okay. Uh, and now we are trying to do it with the factors because the problem is Destran is much bigger and and we our idea is to try to to do it with with the factors, but we are having problems to. Uh, to put a color in the in the factor and to visualize, is we are having problems. <laughs> but we are trying it. But uh, okay, I am numerical, so it's difficult for me these things. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Maybe a, a little bit more philosophical question is okay. like, what is at this moment your research question? Because in a sense, you go. You say like, okay, I want to simulate things. At some point, you come from uh, wound healing. Then you go to microfluids. Is it now that you want to simulate microfluids, or do you want to understand the, the, the problem? Like, what is your research philosophy in the sense? Yes, like, where our, do you want to go? Yes, our main uh, work is going to focus to understand which are the mechanisms that cells are using for moving. So the idea is to combine technology in order to understand this better. Our main focus is to understand how they move in 3D. So with two main ideas, is the first one is for cancer, we would like to understand which are the mechanisms that cells are using for moving and to metastasize from one tissue, from one organ to other. So our idea is to understand how they move in this condition. And the other one is to understand how healthy physiological cells like fibroblasts move in normal conditions in order to improve our regeneration capacity. So our body is able to regenerate. The problem is, it's a question of size. If the size is very small, our body is able to regenerate. But if the size is very big, the body is not able because cells are not able to migrate so far. So we need to try to investigate how we can improve this. And for example, you know that the salamander is able to regenerate all the limbs. So our idea is to try to understand how has to be the condition in vitro to translate and to try to understand the fundamental mechanism to improve regeneration. So we have two main questions is to understand, to try to stop this tumor cell and to try to improve the movement of uh, physiological cells. Thank you. Uh, I have, I have a a, cu a couple of questions. Well, three questions, two groups. Okay. <laughs> first question is um, first question is is a little bit about uh, ab about the tool, and I think that particularly for people who would like to start to do this kind of uh, advanced research in, in in modeling, sometimes that's important um, that you're not limited by the tool or you don't see too difficult to the tool. So. To which measure are you developing your own uh, your own uh, computational solving tools and visualization tools? And to which measure are you using already built tools in which you can uh, friendly enter only your uh, scientific calculation uh, equations? Okay, it depends. Okay, I don't know if I understand the question, eh? but if I understood your question is. Normally, it depends on the student, in my case. I normally give freedom to the students. So normally, when one PhD student comes to my lab, I said, we are going to investigate this. And normally, we have different, for example, we have our own finite element code. We have a commercial finite element code. But normally, uh, I work together with the student, and we define which is the best 
uh, approach to solve a one specific problem. So my idea now is all the students, I try that all the students try to do some experiment and some simulation, which is not easy because normally uh, numerical people only like to do simulations and um, people that do experiment don't like to do simulation. So, but I think it's very important uh, to do all together and to understand everything because if you now, what you obtain from the model, you are able to, to try to investigate how to, you can achieve some specific measurements in your experiment. So in this way, we can uh, achieve a good uh, feedback between both methodologies. I don't know if it's your question or not, but. <laughs> yeah, it's part of the question. Uh, OK. <laughs> But anyway, uh, and then there's the other questions I have, but yeah. it's a bit more scientific. So uh, first question is uh, when, you're, when you're simulating the deformation of the cell in, in, in 3D. So I'm, I'm wondering uh, so whether you're respecting so uh, basic continuum mechanics, uh, low inelasticity, like reversibility of the deformation, tensor gradients, et cetera, because in the end what happens in the cell is very inside different no, from what is happening in a... Inside the cell, you mean? Yes. So when, when, you, when you're simulating the deformation of the cell, for example, the interaction of the cell with the wall of the, of the pipette. And ah, yes. so um, what, kind of, what, kind of, what kind of solver, what kind of theoretical approach uh, do you use? So is it you plasticity? Is it elastoplasticity? Is it yeah, something yeah, yeah. No, it's an different? hyperelastic approach for the uh -huh. solid. We use an hyperelastic uh, approach. And uh, in this moment, what we do is when we have the new geometry, we extrapolate the variable that we have before to uh, estimate uh, the stresses. Okay. So what we are doing is to map back, to obtain the data there, and we uh, update to, to quantify the stress distribution. So normally, we estimate the, the, the boundary is moving, okay? And when we have the new position, because we have a fixed mix and later a moving mix, okay? The boundary is moving. When we move there, we have to locate where was this point before. So when we know where was this point before, we update the variable there to the new location in the new configuration of the mix. You see my point? Yeah, yeah. This is what we do. Okay, and don't you expect, because then you simulated the cell as a hyperelastic uh, continuum, don't you expect that in the real system you have some kind of fluidization? No, in the case, we only simulate the cell like uh, the, the nucleus of the cell is a solid. The cytoplasm and the cytoskeleton in this case, we simulate like a fluid. Oh, because in this kind of, of tube, normally the cell is, is more similar to a fluid than to a solid. The cell is more similar to a solid when we have mesenchymal migration. When we have amoeboid migration or this kind of migration, normally the cytoskeleton is uh, uncoupled and the cell uh, is mainly, the cytoplasma is mainly a fluid, it's not a solid. Mm -hmm. So in this kind of simulation, only the, sol the nucleus is simulated like a solid. Okay. And then the l last question I had uh, from a scientific point of view is, what is really rational to use fibrin? Because it's kind of tricky material. When it's subjected to local forces, it's able to locally partly deassemble, then, then reassemble when the force is gone. Uh, that's, uh, it's a material that y you've shown comparison between collagen yeah, yeah. and fibrin, but indeed fibrin has an, an infinity of states, huh, depending yeah, 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 on yeah. the... Yes, you, you are right. Uh, okay, f it was... Mm, and uh, okay, in my opinion, it was our our, our uh, low experience in uh, this kind of experiment. So initially, we have no idea. We started with two materials that are in a wound, collagen and fibrin, and we started with that. Now we are mainly uh, don't consider fibrin because it's too steep. The experiments are. Uh, and we are mainly concentrated on collagen, and now we are working, for example, changing the concentration of collagen, incorporating different kind of core linker. So we are working with that, and later we are working with other kind of material. But fibrin was a fresh approach that we used, but yes, I, I fully agree with you. It's not, it wasn't very useful. Okay, for us, give us an idea that the cell 
is uh, okay the constraints of the matrix is very relevant to determine how the cell is moving it was for that only the question it's lunchtime no other question no so lunchtime <laughs> and the practical sessions again the same places 230 keep in mind that today is the last day and that uh, presentations for tomorrow and the report in brackets has to be written, but <laughs> no, no, Jerome no. will explain it later. No, no, la pregunta que tenía, por ejemplo, claro, utilizas un, por ejemplo, cuando cuando calculas lo, la, las proyecciones de los lamelo de los lamelopodos.